Yeah, so Mark, once again, welcome on Data Ops Poland Recap. So stage is yours, you are a star. Go. Thank you very much, Thomas. Yeah, we see plane, but if there is a uh, sound, we don't hear it. Hello, and welcome to this Vertica IoT use case tracking aircraft in near real time using a Raspberry Pi, Kafka, and Vertica. My name is Mark Worley, manager of Vertica Education based in South Wales in the United Kingdom. I have been part of the Vertica family since 2016, but have been working in the field of relational database management systems since the 1980s, starting out with Michael Stonebreaker's Ingress through several other technologies to Vertica. To be clear, this presentation and use case were not designed nor built to address a particular business need, though there is no reason for it not being so. A little while back, I was staring aimlessly into the sky, watching the condensation trails being left by aircraft flying high above. This then got me thinking about those small silvery dots in the sky, where these planes had flown from, where were they were flying to? How fast were they traveling? What is their altitude? What type of plane is it? Who is the operator of that aircraft? And why am I not on that plane traveling to some exotic location? I then started to wonder why in the mornings there were more flights traveling from west to east and in the afternoons from east to west. My curiosity had been stirred. I had to find out more, and thus this project came into being. Before I begin this presentation, I introduced myself as being manager for Vertica Education. Now, I don't expect many, if any of you, know who I am. But I was wondering how many of you had come across Vertica before. Now, anticipating there are probably few who have come across Vertica, I hope that by the end of this short presentation, you will know a little bit more about what Vertica is and what it is capable of. As a one-liner introduction, Vertica is a fast relational columnar SQL database designed to handle huge volumes of data for analytics. Of course, this is a very vague statement. So what better a way to look at one of the areas in which Vertica excels? For a number of years, we have seen that IoT is resulting in millions, if not billions, of connected devices generating an unfathomable amount of data from sensors. So to give you an idea of a real-time live use case of how Vertica can support IoT, I would like to introduce you to a simple end-to-end -end application. Starting off with an overview of the project and then jumping into a live demo. Whereas many IoT use cases rely on relatively inexpensive sensors, such as temperature, rainfall, and light, the one I have chosen for this demonstration are commercial aircraft. After conducting some initial research, I found that nearly all commercial aircraft and an increasing number of private planes are equipped with a transponder. Using GPS signals, these transponders transmit a number of data points several times per second using a technology known as Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADSB for short. 
The primary purpose of ADSB is for situational awareness, such as trying to prevent those 500 ton conveyances from bumping into each other at 1,000 miles per hour at a height of 40,000 feet, and is used by air traffic controllers, pilots, and aircraft navigation systems. The data being transmitted includes such items as the registration number, call sign, longitude, latitude, and altitude, speed above the ground, timestamps, and several other useful data points. This data is transmitted via a radio frequency of 1090 megahertz. I thus needed to find a way to capture this data and see if I could do something with it. To start things off, I decided to buy a Raspberry Pi computer. Now, there were two reasons for choosing the Raspberry Pi. Firstly, it's relatively cheap. And secondly, they are built in my home country of Wales. Next, I would need to buy a digital broadcast receiver and an antenna. Thankfully, these cheap USB dongles, which are designed for capturing television signals so that you can watch TV whilst on the move, just so happen to cover the frequency of 1090 megahertz. With data arriving as digitally encoded software-defined radio signals, a piece of open source software called Dump 1090 came to the rescue to decode and present the data from the aircraft as a stream of ASCII messages. Now, there's not much I can do with these messages on their own. I need to get them into my database. And I can think of no better a database to do so than Vertica. Designed and built for high volume, extremely fast data ingestion. But how are we going to achieve this? Starting off with a simple ETL application and using Apache Kafka as a messaging bus, we can now feed this data in near real time into our Vertica database. <coughs> In addition to the initial fixed radar in my home office of South Wales, here we're looking at a custom-built portable Raspberry Pi. This often travels with me to trade shows and exhibitions, but you can probably imagine the raised eyebrows when I try to take this through airport security. As mentioned, the official uses of ADSB are for situational awareness and collision avoidance. However, there are also a number of other commercial use cases that have sprung up, such as Flight Radar 24. <coughs> <coughs> FR 24 is based in Stockholm, Sweden, and provides a worldwide commercial flight tracking web portal for the general public. To provide this worldwide coverage, they rely on many hundreds of contributors from around the world who have set up their own flight tracking receivers, capturing data in their catchment area, and in turn, making it available to FR24. Since 2013, I have been one of those contributors, streaming approximately 20 million messages per day from my Raspberry Pi in South Wales in the United Kingdom. As I mentioned earlier, this demo was not designed nor built to satisfy any particular business or commercial need. It was initially intended for me to answer those questions I had from watching the condensation trails of aircraft. It has since been used as a live demo of what can be achieved using relatively inexpensive hardware by anyone anywhere in the world. As such, that portable radar has traveled with me from around the world, appeared in many trade shows and events, and has encouraged others to follow my lead, some of whom have built their own radars and are feeding streaming data into my Vertica database, others feeding their own community edition Vertica databases. 
Using the open source Dump 1090 application for decoding the software defined radio signals from my home office in South Wales, west of Swansea on this map, we can see the positions of aircraft being picked up by the radio receiver and Raspberry Pi. In this 10 minute time lapse video, I am tracking a British Airways flight, BAW 827, that I first picked up signals from north coast of Wales, above the Isle of Anglesey, and in the following 10 minutes, tracked it down to just south of Birmingham in England. In that 10 minute window, that single aircraft transmitted seven and a half thousand messages. Multiply that by the number of aircraft being picked up by the single radar. And you can see we have a fine source of streaming data, quite literally flying around us. But this is just a visualization of the live data. Nothing is being stored anywhere. Next, we want to look at getting this data into Vertica from where we can not only analyze and report on the live data feed, but to include all the historic data as well. I mentioned earlier that Vertica is a fast relational columnar SQL database designed to handle huge volumes of data for analytics. But it's a lot more than this. At its core, we can see some of the many components of the Vertica engine. On top of its standard support for ANSI SQL, Vertica has everything for geospatial, real-time analytics, text analytics, event series, pattern matching, time series, machine learning, and many more are all there. In support of these, in a moment, we'll see how Vertica tops the league when it comes to inbuilt database functions. Then looking at the wider ecosystem, whether you need to perform data transformation, streaming, extract, transform and load, business intelligence and visualization. Just a handful seen here, I will also be showing you how Vertica seamlessly interacts with just about any third party tool that you could come up with. In this flight tracking project, I'm using Apache Kafka to capture the streaming data from a small number of Raspberry Pi computers. In this use case, I'm running Vertica in the cloud on a Dell PowerEdge cluster, from where I have set up Vertica's Kafka scheduler to ingest data in 30 second micro batches. In a few moments, I will demonstrate how Vertica seamlessly interacts with a number of BI and visualization tools, looking at some open source tools such as Grafana, Nime, and DBeaver, and commercial tools such as Tableau. For those not familiar with Kafka, developed by LinkedIn, Kafka is an open source publish subscribe messaging system often described as a distributed event log, where producers or publishers produce new records or messages, which are immutable and appended with an offset to the end of a log known as a topic. Consumers or subscribers then consume these messages. Messages are persisted to disk where there is a retention policy determining how long they're stored. This retention policy is defined as a set period of time defaulting to seven days or the size of the log before older messages are automatically purged. Looking at the integration between Vertica and Kafka, Vertica provides a highly performant mechanism for consuming storing and analyzing streaming data being generated by applications which are producing messages into Kafka topics. Vertica can also act as a producer with data being sent to Kafka topics to be consumed downstream by applications that can read data off the Kafka message bus. 
In this use case we're looking at today, we'll only be considering the consuming of data being generated by applications into Vertica. Now, when it comes to consuming data from Kafka into Vertica, there are two ways that this can be achieved. The manual load mechanism is performed using the SQL copy statement, allowing you to load a finite amount of data from Kafka. The second method, and the one we'll be performing here today, is the automatic load mechanism via a scheduler and is configured using a tool called vkconfig. Now, this scheduler has a number of advantages over the manual load process, including continuously loading data from Kafka and ensuring each message is loaded exactly once. Predictive analytics is now a key trend on the market, and Vertica enables our users to use this. Unlike other technologies, our approach to machine learning is different and innovative. Everything is inside the database, and we were the first to introduce this. You can create, train, and implement machine learning models on a massive scale with Vertica. Vertica also works with many programming languages popular amongst data science teams, such as R and Python. Additionally, Vertica allows you to import models created in TensorFlow or other platforms that can be described in PMML format. We have also developed a Python library called Vertica Pi, dedicated for Vertica, which provides functions similar to scikit-learn, pandas, using, but using the speed and analytic capabilities of machine learning functions built into the Vertica database. But what benefits does this approach to machine learning bring? Well, it eliminates the overhead for data transfer. No need for data downsampling. Provides for data security and provenance. Model storage and management inside the database and the ability to score inside the database. Serving analytics and machine learning to multiple concurrent users. Highly scalable data preparation and machine learning functionalities and avoiding the maintenance cost of a separate system. What we are also seeing is that more and more people are wanting to do compound analytics and machine learning. The problem being, most other technologies simply do not have the ability to perform the full end-to-end -end machine learning lifecycle. To highlight the maturity of Vertica, here we are focusing on built-in, out-of-the-box functions. Now, sure, some of these technologies enable you to write your own user-defined functions or extensions to fill that gap between what's available inside the database and the business need. And Vertica is no exception here. But doing so takes considerable time and effort and will rarely be as performant or capable as a built-in function that was designed to be an integral part of the core product. By having everything already in the toolbox results in shorter time to market and higher performance. So again, just concentrating on built-in SQL functions, we can see that Vertica comes out as number one. Then our customers typically rely on a plethora of tools to perform their day-to-day -day activities, whether that be for data transformation, messaging, ETL, BI, and visualization? And who are we to say they can't continue to use them? One of our goals is to give our customers complete flexibility and freedom to choose the tools they are familiar with today and into the future, reducing the need for investment and training in new tools, and ensuring their business intelligence is accelerated. That's why we have partnered with major technology and solutions providers across industries to provide a complete analytics ecosystem so our customers can efficiently and effectively 
manage big data. This list of nearly 100 technology partners integrations just goes to show how open Vertica is to working with the wider ecosystem. Okay, enough of this talking. Let's see some of this hopefully in action. So if you give me one moment, I just want to share a different screen. Bring up my crib notes so I don't forget to show you something. And uh, all being well, I should have a... Okay. Okay, so starting off with a quick uh, demonstration of where we are, uh, starting off from the vertica.com website, which I'm not going to go into, but if there are any questions later, I'm happy to come back to that. So what I was talking about earlier was how we are uh, 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 capturing data in real time from aircraft via a small IoT edge devices, a series of Raspberry Pi computers. We have a number of them dotted around the world, not many of them. Um, and that data is being uh, transformed from, from its software-defined radio signals into ASCII that we, can, uh, that we can use to feed that, produce that data into a series of Kafka topics from where we can then ingest that data into the Vertica database. So just, uh, my mouse gone. So let's have a look at what that data might look like. I'll just clear the screen a little. So here I am signed into um, one of the Vertica uh, nodes in the cluster. This is a five node Vertica cluster. It doesn't need to be five nodes, it just so happens to be. And one of the useful tools that comes, it's not, it's not a Vertica tool, it's an open source tool, which um, is shipped with Vertica, is a tool called Kafka Cat. And I'll just quickly look at the command line here. It's not, it's not too complex. I'm calling a function called Kafka Cat. I'm using a parameter called minus C, which is to consume data. So I could consume data from Kafka. I can produce data to Kafka. I'm giving it the name of my Kafka broker, which is a domain name there. And I'm instructing this consume to read from a topic called dump, oh, my apologies, dump 1090, if I have the right screen, dump 1090 message one. So that is the name of one of my 11 topics that I'm feeding data into. We won't look at all 11, I'll just look at two of them for today, but you can, uh, you can get a, an idea as to what's coming through. And then I'll format the output just to give an idea of what it looks like by printing the name of the topic and its offset and its partition and so forth. So let's just look at some data. Hopefully it's still all running. Thankfully it is. You say never do live demos. Uh, <laughs> you're in the hands of the demo gods. Thankfully, this is working for me. So I'll just break in there and let's have a look at the data. So this is a live stream of data being fed into my Kafka topic. Um, you can see the clock at the bottom of my screen. We're currently 18.29 here in the UK. I guess you guys are one, maybe two hours ahead of me. Um, now, if I just look at the structure of this one, one of these records, I'm going to pick this one here. Can highlight it. It doesn't matter which one I pick, but I'll go for that one. On the left hand side, we can see I'm picking up for the topic message one. I'm picking up the offset. In this case, as I mentioned before, every top every message that is written to a topic, Kafka allocates an offset number. So we're currently at 2.1 billion since this uh, Kafka broker was set up. Relatively small in, in comparison. I then have a number of fields which are identifying this topic and uh, my ETL program, one of the things it did is prefix the record with where did this data get captured, which, which, which uh, Raspberry Pi picked this up. Uh, I live in a small village called Pennard, uh, so, so that's why I called it Pennard, and this one also feeds the data into Flight Radar 24 that I mentioned. Now I won't go through all of these data fields, but if I just look at this one here, looks a bit strange. This is a hex identification or registration number of the aircraft. So this uniquely identifies the aircraft that I've seen. We then see two timestamp columns. And in this case, they're both identical. They're not always identical. If you just look down some of the others, you might see there's milliseconds, microseconds difference in between them. And this is the timestamp that the message was transmitted from the aircraft transponder. And the second message, the timestamp, sorry, is the timestamp that the message was uh, decoded by the uh, Dump 1090 software on the Raspberry Pi. And the final piece here, some of you might recognize some of these names. These are the 
these are the uh, call signs of the registration number. So I know that this is Thompson's Airways. I know this is Ryanair uh, and various others. And so what I'll do, because I'm rather biased, I'm going to pick this um, uh, EasyJet one here. And I mentioned the flight, uh, the, the uh, flight radar 24. So hopefully I've still got this open here. So flight radar, here we are. Um, so this is this is not Vertica. This is the open. This is the public um, uh, portal that Flight Radar provide uh, commercial operation. And uh, as I mentioned, I live just down here in Swansea, in South Wales. The aircraft that I have just seen, I said it was an easy jet. So let's have a look at it and show it on the map. And there we are. So this aircraft, I am my radar is located here, and I pick that aircraft signal coming up it's coming in here it looks as though it's come from rome and it's heading towards bristol which is here so i can track that one aircraft there so this is live data live data feeds streaming in the safety or series of raspberry pis into my into my um uh, apache kafka and and so forth so let's look at just one more of those topics so I'm not going to say I'm not going to look at all the topics. There's 11 of them in total. So I'll look at topic number three, message number three. And this is a much more active uh, stream of data. So this is currently up to offset number 8.7 billion. Um, some of the records, some of the fields, sorry, are similar to ones you saw before. Um, what I didn't mention before is I've got these these Raspberry Pi radars. I have my my flight radar 24 based at home here. Um, I have another one which is missing off this list, but I have another one which is Pennard Pi on tour. I've got one in the Customer Innovation Center of Hewlett Packard Enterprise in Geneva, as you might guess. Um, a colleague of mine has one in New York, just outside JFK Airport, and we have a few others dotted around the world. That was in a very similar record format. It's got the hex ident, it's got the timestamps that we saw previously. But this, this record, this topic contains additional data pieces. So this is indicating the altitude of the aircraft in feet. So this aircraft is currently at 36,000 feet. And you might guess what the next two columns are. They're going to be the latitude and longitude or the other way around. They always get the wrong way around. So I've now got not only the registration number, the identification of this aircraft, the timestamp that I saw it, but I can position, I position that aircraft altitude, latitude, and longitude, exactly where it is located. So I won't go through all the other columns. I won't go through all of the other um, 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 topics. So say there are 11 of them in total, but you get an idea as to the sort of data that we're capturing from here. <coughs> okay, just make sure I've not missed anything out there. So what I would normally do now is I'd jump into something called the Vertical Management Console, but subconscious of time, I might just come back to this later in more detail. But to give you a feel for what this is all about, Vertica is a database engine and was born as a database engine, as you saw, it's got all those capabilities within it. But it also comes with a graphical user interface called the Management Console, which as its name sort of implies, tells you what uh, uh, your status of your database is and what it's currently doing. And what I'm looking at here is the status of my Kafka Vertica integration via the scheduler. I have my ignore these at the bottom. I have my 11 dump 1090 topics down here. Um, and you can get an idea of the number of messages that were received in the last micro batch. And I'm doing this in 30 second micro batches. So every 30 seconds, Vertica is reaching out to Kafka saying, give me your, give me your messages that you've received in the last 30 seconds. So you get an indication of how many messages it picked up in 30 seconds, not huge numbers understandably here, uh, how many in the last hour, how many were rejected and so forth. So I won't go through this in more detail just for the moment. Uh, let's say it's a brilliant tool, management console, and it's great for, for monitoring the status of your of your Vertica cluster. So I talked about how Vertica interacts with just about any third party tool. And um, uh, I'll just show you one. Some of you may be familiar with Grafana, quite often used for monitoring the state of your uh, environment. and i just set this up here with a simple dashboard and we'll show you two dashboards. And this dashboard here, and I'll just do a quick refresh. I'll do a refresh in just a moment. But here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sheets on this dashboard. And behind each of these uh, sheets, um, taking this one, for example, here, which 
uh, sadly I can't find a way in Grafana of comma separating but this is if I just highlight across this is 121 billion messages that have been received so this is a query that's been running against the Vertica database and you can probably imagine it's going to take forever to to run that query uh, this query it's it's not just counting the number of records on the table this is a union join counting the number of records across the 11 tables that I was just talking about and these are similar ones this is uh saying count the number of records in the last full day this is a, a where clause counting the number of records that have been received since midnight gmt or utc today number of messages in the last week um and i can imagine these sorts of queries are going to take forever to run so if i hit a refresh here and just watch how long it takes to come back it's already done it so we don't take long running queries in Vertica, and this is one of the beauties of Vertica. Once it's the sweet spots, I just ran one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of queries against a database that's not huge. This is small 121 billion records across 11 tables, and we're getting performance like that. In case you blinked and missed it, I say. I probably, if I run it now, it won't change because it's only refreshing every 30 seconds. But if I do a refresh, which will do the query, the set of queries directly against the database, no, hasn't changed yet. I'll leave it a few more seconds, it would come into it. I'll just have a look at another sort of query here. If I look at manage and come down to my primary radars. <clears throat> So again, a series of uh, sheets, and they all refreshed very, very quickly, as you just saw there. Now this one, each of these has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In fact, there are, theoretically, there are 11 queries, of which only a small number of them are returning data, because the other ones don't have any data. Multiply by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of uh, sheets. The response time coming back is, is outstanding. Just run that again, everyone. That one. The New York one took, what, two seconds possibly. The others completed in no time at all. And just looking behind the scenes, we'll be looking at SQL in just a moment. If I look behind the scenes at the query, there we are, a simple uh, select statement against, against the, in this case, it's against a view within the database uh, using Grafana's uh, syntax for uh, the timestamp uh, uh, searching. So that's a little quick look at, at Grafana, but probably the more interesting one, this is where I'd like to spend a little bit more time, is in uh, Tableau, because I'd like to look at some of the um, SQL that we can submit to, to, to Vertica to show you not only how performant it is, but how simple it is to write these queries. So again, another, in this case, Tableau dashboard. Tableau is running on another server, totally separate from Vertica. So there's obviously a latency issue here in so much as data is queries are submitted from Tableau server to the database, results are returned. And even then you saw that was one or two seconds in response time. So again, here we're looking at a sheet that's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sheets on a dashboard. And I'll just prove a point by refreshing it. So we saw before 121 billion rows, how many messages? Yesterday, 101 million rows received yesterday. So far, it's received nearly 21 million today. GMT, a bit low, considering. Uh, oh, sorry, I haven't done a ref haven't done a refresh. My apologies. I last, I last ran this at, at 10 past 11. That's why it's rather low. <coughs> a few seconds. There we are. So 1840, that's more like it. So towards the end of my day, more like 64 million rows of data that have been brought out here. So just to give you a, a sort of a feel as to performance of Vertica, I mean, we've seen dashboards refreshing very quickly. I'm going to have a look at this one here called Painted Pink. Now, people often ask me why they call this Painted Pink. Um, uh, when I first prepared this dashboard, probably two years ago, um, my granddaughter at the time, Lola, uh, she used to come into my office with her crayons and i could always imagine her getting a piece of paper and scribbling across my uh, my, my my screen with, with with pink crayons so uh, it's a personal reason why it was called that but what we're looking at here this isn't a complex query at all this is simply a select across a series of tables in vertica that you just saw where it had 120 billion rows of data and i'm looking for all of the messages that have been received from aircraft 
in the past 20 minutes that have been picked up by my radar here in South Wales. And I could do it for any number of my other radars as well if I wanted to. But these are the tracks of aircraft. If I just point at the beginning of one of these tracks, this one here. So this is, I'll take my hand off the screen keyboard because I have a shaky hand. So I mentioned the hexident. So this is the aircraft 4005C1, latitude 52 point and longitude minus 5.9, altitude 36,000 feet. There's its timestamp, 1836 today. And if I scroll down further down this line, get my hand off. Okay. 1822 so that timestamp is before the one that i just looked at so to me this aircraft is traveling from east to west as i was mentioning uh, as i was mentioning earlier so this is a series these are the each one of these if i zoom in i can't go too far because it takes tableau forever to refresh it but if i zoom in just slightly you can see that these lines are made up of dots each of those dots is a single message received from the aircraft at that time just refresh to the home page. Come on, Tableau, don't let me down. And just to show you how we can have what I call the conversation with the data. So let me change the query slightly. At the moment, I'm asking Vertica to return for me the last 20 minutes worth of data for my radar in South Wales. And I'm going to change it from 20 minutes. I'm going to change it to 30 minutes. Why not? And count how many seconds? One, two, just over two seconds and that is not only tableau submitting the query to vertica vertica executing the query returning the results which are obviously in the last 30 minutes you see more data more data points therefore so tableau took a little while to refresh re re re, re image that uh, screen for me so again not looking at complex queries but seeing how you can have a conversation with data so very very simply now Final piece I'm going to look at in queries. I'm going to close this one down and slide across here a little way. Uh, I've just moved things around today. And um, one of the conversations I quite often have when I'm doing presentations, I ask the audience, and I won't do so today, uh, but I ask the audience, how many data scientists do I have in here? Because I'm quite often talking to data scientists. And I have to put my hand up to say, I am not a data scientist. I know enough to be dangerous. Um, but quite often I'll find that there are no data scientists and I go, oh, I've got a presentation here, which I can't really show. So I like to show something that even if you're not a data scientist, you can understand what it is I'm going to be talking about. And you can then hopefully see how data scientists can, can, can gain from that. Now, those of you who fly, uh, typically fly from A to B. It might be, in my case, it might be from Cardiff to New York. Not that that's impossible because I don't fly to New York. But if I could, it would be flying from Cardiff to New York in a relatively straight line. And what I'm looking at here, and I can just tell you that this is a series of plots for a single aircraft. Or well, how do I know it's a single aircraft? Well, if I look at the registration number, 40077C3, and if I'll just randomly pick here, it's the same aircraft, 4077C3, and this one down here is exactly the same. So this is the same aircraft. So the next thing we should observe about this is quite clearly it's not going from A to B. It seems to be going up and down, left and right. No idea what it's doing. We'll find out that in just a moment. Now, you and I know that if we look at the, the timestamps here, this is the 21st of April 2020 at 7.42. This is the 16th of April, excuse me, 16th of April. And if I scroll down to this one, this is the 13th of April. Now you and I know that that aircraft did not stay in the sky for a whole month. It must have landed and taken off just as it would have had you been flying from London to New York. It gets to New York, it stops, it refuels, passengers get off, new passengers get on and maybe it returns to, to, to London Heathrow. So a data scientist looks at this and says, well, the first problem that I've got that I need to, to address is I know that this aircraft didn't stay in the sky for a whole month of April. It must have landed and taken off. And let's call those, as we colloquially call them, separate flights. But problem is the data that I have available to me, the aircraft doesn't tell me what flight it's on. All it tells me is a timestamp, its latitude, its longitude, its altitude, speed above the ground. It doesn't say I'm traveling from New York to London. 
uh, I haven't got that data. So the data scientist has to look at this and think of a way that they can determine that this flight here is different to this flight here and different to this flight here. The second challenge that the data scientist has before they can do their magic with machine learning is as you look at some of these tracks, there appear to be gaps in the data. Certainly if I look up here, um, now the airplane didn't just disappear between there and there. It flew between there and there or the other way around. But for some reason, I didn't receive any data from it, missing data. So the data scientist will look at this and say, OK, I know the last message I hear was at 7.36 and 08, and here 7.37 and 19. So I could try to work out roughly where the aeroplane was, and it looks like it's going to be a straight line, between this point and this point for every second. So they go away, this data scientist goes away, spends many hours, maybe even days, trying to cleanse the data to get it into a state that they can use it to do machine learning. In Vertica, and I'm going to show you the code in just a moment to show you how simple it is, but not just how simple it is, but the speed at which we can run this query. So I've taken the, the, the same data, and now I have done two things. First of all, you'll notice that there's color coding in here. But what I've done to make it easier to understand is I have <coughs> color coded the flights. So I can keep my cursor still. So flight number 10. Now we didn't have a column called flight number 10 in our data, but I've determined that all of these messages here belonged to flight number 10. And these belong to flight number four. And these belong to flight number one. Now, in Vertica, we call this sessionization, and it's a brilliant use case for all sorts of use cases, regardless of what it is, whether it's a, a website visits or, or other types of activity, something called sessionization. And the second thing you'll notice is those gaps appear to have been filled in. There are no gaps in my lines anymore. Now, admittedly, this <laughs> airplane seems to have started here and land and finished here. I've got no idea where it came from. Well, I still don't know where it came from. But the moment I saw this aircraft at 8.07, and then last time I saw it at 10.45, I know everywhere it went in that period of time. So what does the code look like? So have a look at some raw SQL. This is uh, another of the 100 uh, third-party technology tools that work with Vertica. Uh, this is another open source one called dBeaver. I love it. Um, everybody has their favorites. Uh, and there's a ton of SQL in here, which I'm more than happy to share with anybody who wants to see it. But for today, I'm just going to concentrate on the piece of SQL that was involved in preparing that Tableau dashboard. If you just jump down towards the end. And a very, very simple piece of SQL. And this is what 10 lines, 12 lines, whatever it might be. So here I'm using a select clause. I'm selecting the radar. I called it site's name for some reason, but let's call it radar. The hex ident of the registration number of the aircraft, the timestamp, message timestamp, the altitude, latitude, and longitude. I'm only bringing data back from a single table because the three columns that I need here, the altitude, latitude, and longitude, and the timestamp belong on there. So I don't need to look at the other tables. I am hard coding it here. I'm only interested in one airplane. And to the right, just in case anybody's interested in what this airplane is, it's a Beach B200 Super King. So that's very interesting. And here I'm restricting it to my one radar, uh, Pennar FR24. And I'm searching for dates between the 1st of April 2020 and the 30th of April 2020. So again, this database of 120 billion rows. OK, I'm only looking at one of the tables here. Um, let's just run that. Oh, and finally, sorry, I'm sorting it by uh, the timestamp. So let me just run this complex not query against a huge volume of data. And let's see how long it takes to come back with the results. 274 milliseconds to, to run that query against the database, against the 120 billion row database. Um, but let's look more importantly at the data that it's returned. We'll ignore the first two columns because they're all the same. They're all for the same radar, they're all for the same aircraft. But look at the timestamps. The first time I saw this aircraft, 5th of April 2020, at 8.47 and 16 seconds. The next time I see this same aircraft is at 8.47 and 57 seconds. So there's quite a gap between those two times. 
The next one is at 8.51. Well, that's four minutes later. So clearly the gaps between the messages that I'm receiving are of various sizes. But if I scroll down just a little, 9, 16 and 13 seconds, 0.157. 9, 16 and 13 seconds, 6. So just over half a second gap between those. So quite clearly, uh, there's, a, there's a, a variance in the gaps between the messages that I'm getting for whatever reason that is. And the data scientist wants to try and standardize those gaps if at all possible. Now, looking at the altitude, it's a very boring airplane. It's nearly always at 12,000 feet. <laughs> yes, it does jump up to 12,025 feet, but that's fine. We don't worry about that. Now, the airplane is obviously in the air, therefore it's moving, therefore its latitude and longitude must be changing all the time. Yes, if it's not, I'm worried. Uh, so quite clearly, the latitude and longitude are varying all the time. So I've got some data. I've got 63,000 rows of data for this one aircraft for this one month. So that was the SQL query, not a complex SQL query. And I'm not saying Vertica is any better at writing SQL queries like that than any other database technologies. That comes on to when we look at the functions up we can use. But this is the one that returned this data for me, which Tableau kindly plotted for me. So if I were to look behind Tableau, that's the query that I'm running. Back to the query. Let me run the other query, or look at the other query. So I can just make my screen a little larger because it's a slightly longer query. Now, one of the things I mentioned was uh, Vertica has, and I think I forget the exact figure, it keeps increasing, keeps changing and increasing. It has over 650 in database functions. Um, in this first example, I didn't use any functions. However, in this one, I've used a few of them. And I'm just gonna go through and show you some of them, if I may, it's just stretch this out. The two functions, or oh, two main functions that I'm concerned about. One of them I mentioned was the data scientist wants to be able to differentiate between different flights of the same aircraft. So if I go back to this one, so what we're trying to do is to determine this flight is different to this flight. And what we realized when we looked at the raw data is that if I look at this data here, these messages are seconds or fractions of seconds apart, maybe a minute or two apart if the gap is a little bit longer. But when I look at the messages here and compare them to the messages here, then not minutes and seconds apart, they are hours or even days apart. This is the 13th of April. This is the 16th of April. So I can use that to my advantage. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a function in Vertica called conditional true event. Think of it as a test or an if statement in a, in a normal programming language. And what I'm saying is very, very simple. I'm saying if the timestamp of the message that I'm currently looking at is more than or greater than one hour to the previous message, and I use that as a function called lag. So lag is the previous message in this data set. If the gap between those is more than one hour, the conditional true event, ignore everything else just for the moment, generates a column called, I've called it message three flight or flight number if you prefer. That is an integer. It starts off at zero. And every time this conditional true event is true, it increments that flight number by one. If the timestamps do not uh, exceed the one hour interval, then the flight number does not get incremented. So this very simple conditional true event um, allows me to sessionize my data based on the size of the gaps between the timestamps, nice and easy. The other thing I'm doing is I want to fill the gaps in between the messages and interpolate the missing values. And again, this comes in two parts, sadly two parts at opposite ends of the query. The function I'm using is a function called time series. I'm basing it on a timestamp column and I want the interval to be one second, regardless of what the intervals are. Some of them are two minutes, some of them are half a second and so forth. I want the interval to be standard across the board of one second. And what I want you to do, Vertica, is to take my altitude, my latitude and my longitude. My apologies, I'm on the wrong column. My apologies there. My altitude, latitude and longitude. 
and using a function called TS first value. Now this stands for, I won't go into great detail, this is the time series first value using a, in this case, a linear uh, uh, scaling. I want you to scale the, give me the value in this case for the altitude, give me a linear scaling. If, you, if, if your altitude is at 1200 feet here and 1300 feet here a few moments later, I want you to fill in every second, giving me a linear scaling of what the altitude would be between the 1200 and the 1300 for every second in between. And it does the same for latitude and for longitude. And just to clarify, the, there's one other option with linear, uh, sorry, here, function here, uh, parameter, my apologies, linear or constant. Linear, as its name implies, is a linear scaling. Constant says, stay the same until you hit the next value. So it'll stay at 12,000 feet, 12,000 feet, 12,000 feet, 13,000 feet. Now, you know, in an airplane, the airplanes don't jump from 12, Hundred feet to thirteen hundred feet. Yes, they, they linearly go up in 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 in, in, uh, in altitude. So very, very simple. And again, you saw the function running. And if I just uh, so the, saw the functions in there, I'll just run that query. It's not. It's a little longer than the first query, but it's not really more complex than what I've just shown you. So run the query, and in in four hundred ninety four milliseconds. And there was, I think, as I remember just yesterday, I'll go down to record number 5591 in a moment. But if I look at the, the timestamps, again, radar, hex ident identical, the timestamps, you'll now see, ah, oh, 17, 18, 19, 20. We've got that time series function giving us readings every second. The altitude very rarely changed, as we know, so there's no difference in the 1200s. The latitude and the longitude have changed, but more importantly, to the end, we've got this new column called flight or flight number. Starts off at zero and remains at zero because these timestamps only had a second in between them, or sorry, probably less than an hour in between them. And if I scroll down to record number 5519, it's just as quick to do it this way as I discovered and try and search for it. A few moments later, 3,000, 4,000. Oh, 5519. Sorry, I can't read it. It must be late. It must be late in the day. 5519. And there we are. So you can see here that this set of data was for the 5th of April, right up until the last time we saw the aeroplane at 10, 19 and 13 seconds. And because the next message I received from this aircraft was, in this case, actually days apart, four days later, so it's well over the hour window, uh, it increments the flight number from zero through to one. This time I see it at uh, a different altitude, of course, and, and so forth. You can see it varying as it goes through here. Uh, and just to prove a point, go to the end of this data, and there we are, 98,000 rows later, we've gone to flight number 15, starting at zero. So therefore, this aircraft has done 16 different flights on that on that month of, of April 2020. So high performance, not only loading data, high performance in querying data, but getting to value with your data with all of those 650 in database functions makes life for the data scientists and for the analysts so much more so much more fun if nothing else so that was all i had to show you i think on there i have something off my list so what i'll do conscious of time where are we oh top of the hour so i'm going to jump back if i can very briefly i can come back to this for questions later if that's all right i'll just come back to the end of my presentation which is uh there, oh, my apologies. Right. And hit the right button. So, my demo.
Mark, we cannot hear the audio. Soggy music playing, I'll just hear it Okay, apologies for that for those who couldn't hear the audio. Um, it was just music playing in the background, but one thing you might have noticed is that on the front fins of those cars is our vertical logo. Now, we started working with the Jaguar Racing Formula E team early in 2021, and we were helping them to take pole position, win more races, take to the podium, and accumulate more points in the FIA Formula E World Championships using Vertica's high-performance analytics platform. This is yet another great example of how Vertica fits in an IoT use case, where each car generates readings over, for over a thousand signals, such as the temperature of a brake disc. And some of those generate readings 2,000 times per second, resulting in approximately half a billion data points being captured from each car every time it goes out onto the track. During season seven, we captured 100 billion data points from track testing, the driver in the loop simulator, and race weekends. Data lands in Vertica within seconds and is immediately available to the race engineers to garner those valuable insights and to make adjustments to the powertrain, suspension, steering, braking, and power management. Jaguar Racing are now doing things with Vertica that were just not possible with their incumbent database system. They get access to all the raw data, not just an aggregated subset. They get query data from every track test, simulator, and race weekend, not just for a single event. They get to use over 650 in-database functions rather than needing to export data to another analytics tool. And they get to see the results in milliseconds rather than in the tens of minutes. Jaguar Racing finished runners up in season seven of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. The season had been the most successful so far in Jaguar Racing's five year Formula E campaign with eight podiums, two wins, one pole position and 177 points scored. Now, I mentioned that I deployed my Vertica database in the cloud, but Vertica delivers so many other options for deployment, whether it's on premise in your own data centers or in the cloud, in fact, in any cloud, or maybe you'd like to have a hybrid deployment. There are just so many other options including compute and storage separation, Kubernetes deployment, and workload separation, giving you total control and flexibility to meet with your requirements. I also talked about an IoT use case, but Vertica offers so much more, from data warehouse, operational data stores and data lakes, data exploration and customer experience, to name but a few. Now, if you want to have a go yourself, we offer the free Vertica Community Edition to deploy on up to three nodes and one terabyte of data, or our fully managed service, Vertica Accelerator, with a free 14-day powered by trial powered by AWS. Now, as manager of Vertica Education, it would be a miss of me not to at least mention the Vertica Academy, your source of free comprehensive Vertica on-demand training. Now, before opening up to q and I'll finish with this. This is the closest I'll get to ever being behind the wheel of a Formula E racing car. On that, I thank you and open to questions. Oh, deadly.